Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show, and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fall. We believe that all men are created equal. The magnificent mosaic that is America. From radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe me. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Did you hand over any and all documents? Uh, well, I, I will. I've said it publicly. I said it yesterday. More than happy to cooperate with everyone. I just want the truth to get out there. I and mean, that's part of why I released all the stuff today. I wanted to get it all but out this there. Is They're everything. trying to drag out the story. In all fairness, yeah. you know, they have it. They want to drip a little bit today, drip a little bit then. So I was like, here it is. I'm more than happy to be transparent about it, and I'm more than happy to cooperate with everyone. So as far as you know, as far as this incident is concerned, this is all of it. This is everything. This is everything. Okay, so here you have little Donnie Jr. trying to pass this meeting off as if it were one Russian woman trying to talk about adoption. And now it involves the entire cast of Dr. Zhivago. I, there are eight people in this meeting. Every day his story changes. You know, and, and it turns out that one of the guys, uh, now I know everything about him that I can know, everything that's public about him, um, he's a Russian spy. <clears throat> and he says, oh, well, you know... Um, I, I, I hung out with the counterintelligence people. I, I, you know, did spy for a little while, but, you know, uh, I don't spy anymore. Is there such a thing as a former spy or is that like a guy who used to be in the mafia? I don't think you just walk away, but let's ask Malcolm Nance because he's a former spy and the author of The Plot to Hack America. Hey, Malcolm. Hi, Randy. How are you? Are you a former spy, or will you always be a counterintelligence person? Well, I'm a counterterrorism guy. Oh, so terrorism. That even better. Uh, that's even so worse. It's not yeah. like I'm ever going to be out of a job. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, I'll, it's very hard for people to want to stay out of the game. Uh, and many of us do. Many go on to uh, other lucrative and successful careers. However, we're talking not about you know, just a, a Western person. We're talking about an ex-KGB officer. Actually, not KGB. K GRU. He was Russian militarily intelligence. Yeah, he was right. GRU. GRU. Which was, which is, you know, their their version of Defense Intelligence Agency and, you know, the Army, Air Force, Navy intelligence. But mm -hmm. they have espionage duties. And under the Soviet Union, GRU officers were deeply involved with activities closely related to the KGB. That being said... In Putin's world, when he left the KGB and became the enforcer of the city of St. Petersburg, one of the rules that he enacted in order to gain control of the mafia was that everyone he was associated with, even today, when he became, when he created oligarchs, they all had to have an ex-KGB, GRU, or SVR, that's their new external intelligence agency, on their staff. You could not be a billionaire without a former spy who is loyal to Putin somewhere very close to you. Well, so to, fi to find this guy in the middle of the meeting, even though he's an American citizen now, well, and he's a got, lobbyist. He's got dual citizenship. He's a lobbyist who never registered as a foreign dual agent. Citizen. And what's interesting about that oligarchy job he had, you know, at the, one of the biggest uh, klept kleptocracies in Russia was a company called Prevazon. Prevazon. Prevazon, right. right, and so he's he's work he's he's uh, working at Prevazon, and so is Natalia. Isn't that something? Well, you know what I say, Nance's law, right? Coincidence takes a lot of planning. I keep telling and that to my new producer, Scotty Mednick. I keep telling him that Malcolm Nance <laughs> taught me there are no co coincidences in this world. No, not no. at all. So, and. Uh, yeah. yeah, go on, Randy. No, I was just going to say that I was reading this letter that, you know, Charles Grassley in the Senate was very hip to this back in April uh, of 2017. And he wrote a letter, right? Uh, he wrote a letter to uh, uh, John Kelly uh, at Homeland Security. And in this letter, he says that Mr. Akmetchen, uh, a Russian immigrant to the U.S., has admitted right. being, and they put it in quotes what he said about him, his own self. Uh, he said that he was a, quote, Soviet counterintelligence officer. In fact, he worked for GRU. And guess right. what his specialty was, Malcolm? 
Oh, yeah. Propaganda and political warfare. Disinformation, (laughs) political warfare, and propaganda. He is known uh, as a a key pro-Russian political operator. So, you know, his main area of expertise was fake news. (laughs) You know, I've I've been saying this since last year. That uh, Well, certainly since I've written this book, which was last September 23rd. Wow. That this this investigation is going to have multiple lines of inquiry. Mm-hmm. There is no one dirty trick team. There is multiple. There will be multiple dirty trick teams. There is no one co-op. No, I listen. Uh, this meeting. There will be multiple. Teams. I know, and, and, and I think what Mueller is really looking at, uh, quite frankly, and I think the reason why it's going to take as long as it's going to take, is because he's looking at all this money laundering. I mean, Prevazon is a company based out of Cyprus that is controlled by the Russian government, okay? And right. they, they were charged with one of the biggest tax frauds in the history of Russia. $230 million was taken out of the Russian treasury, given to this Russian-owned company, uh, and, right. and, 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 and uh, they uh, wrote it, wrote a, a good chunk of it off on a guy named Bill Browder's uh, investment company, Ca- uh, Hermitage Capital Investment, right? Right. right. Uh, okay. And so Brown, so, so uh, go ahead. Browder wrote all about this in his book, Red Notice. And Browder, you know, filed also a complaint, a Farah complaint. You know, the foreign, uh, I, th- I think it, that this show was the first show that ever brought up the fact that if you're lobbying for a foreign government, you have to register as a foreign agent. And I know this because Howard was one of the top 50 lobbyists in Washington, and then he's my you know, significant other. So, you know, when this all started happening, he goes, you know, how are these people lobbying like this without registering? And let me check if they're registered. No one was. Well, Bill Browder got hip to this too. And Bill Browder filed a Farah complaint uh, on Hermitage Capital Management uh, stationery. And in it, he goes through all the cast of characters and what they were trying to do. And in a nutshell, what they were trying to do is because of the Prevazon case, okay, they were trying to do two things. One, shield the information information about where this money was invested in Manhattan condos, which condos, which buildings, who owned them. That was uh, what uh, uh, Natalia's job was. Okay, and right. the, and, the, and she was also, they formed this fake NGO in Delaware uh, that was supposed to be all about Russian adoption. But, you know, the Russian adoption problem is Russia's problem because Putin uh, you know, enacted a ban on Americans adopting Russian babies, Russian orphans, uh, because that was how he retaliated against the Magnitsky Act. Now, what is the Magnitsky Act? That is what Bill Browder uh, uh, lobbied to have. Uh, and what it was, was he had hired a lawyer slash forensic accountant to see why all these write-offs were showing up on his firm in Russia. And it turned out that it was Prevazon laundering money. So he went to the United States, he went to the Justice Department, and asked them, you know, could they do anything? And they said, no, because, you know, these are Russian nationals. We don't have any uh, jurisdiction over them. But what we could do, Preet Pahara said, we could bring a civil suit. Right? Yeah, okay. absolutely right. And absolutely right. You're, you're on point about everything. Well, good, because I figured this out like days ago. And, and, and what kills me is that the two of them that were in this meeting, I mean, it seems to me that, you know, uh, why, why does Junior lie so much? I mean, what is he so afraid of if, if, if he's, you know, going to be so transparent? Thing which I, I try to get everybody on the same sheet of music uh, when, when everyone's tearing their hair out. There are 13 financial crimes investigators, the top ones in the Justice Department, now working under Rob counsel. I can't hear you. You're breaking up. Are you on a cell phone? Hello? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. (laughs) So what I was saying was all of this and more can be explained by the 13 top financial crime investigators in the Department of Justice now working for the special counsel. In the they in- have just one team looking for spy links, but they have 13 teams looking at financial crimes related to high-value real estate. The Trump, <laughs> camp, the Trump people, Jared Kushner, uh, Donald Trump Jr. And here's a little interesting one, because before people start 
saying, well, you know, Akhmeninov and, and, and uh, uh, Vesel- Veselnitskaya. Yeah, Veselnitskaya uh, were, you know, citizens and they were just doing their thing. I just want to call attention to you that at one point there was a team of Russian spies in the United States. Mm-hmm. And the most noteworthy of them was a young woman by the name of Anna Chapman. One of the cover stories Anna Chapman had here was a high-value real estate broker. Mm. She was a Russian FSB, full-scale, non-official cover intelligence officer. The Russians so deeply invested in the high-value real estate uh, that they have these firms, these individuals, but every one of them were one degree of separation from Putin's intelligence agency. And that was by design. Do you think, uh, is Anna Chapman still around? Is she still here in the United States? I mean... Oh, no, no, no. She got she was kicked out along with uh, six or seven other spies that were captured here in the United States. And now she has a line of handbags. But most interestingly, <laughs> is she is like, that's not a joke. And, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if she was, if she is, uh, you know, taking over a certain individual's line of handbags in Russia. But, you know, she is now one of the top heroes of Russia. And, and she, whenever there's a controversy related to espionage, she comes on Russia Today and, and speaks in favor of Putin. Uh-huh. These people integrated near intelligence and known intelligence officers everywhere throughout the United States, and most notably in oligarchy organizations. And, and they laundered their dirty money in high-value real estate. Hmm. Do you think it has anything to do with Trump? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh, how could it possibly be? But, you, uh, you, know, you, you, is, you know, you asked earlier, Yeah. why does Donald Trump Jr. continue to lie? Yes. Why did the White House, who we're now finding out through NBC exclusive reporting, yeah. that they had this information, well, in CNN as well, they had this information as early as as three weeks ago. The that, Trump lawyers had this information. Therefore, they were prepared. When the first instance of it came out in the media, they crafted, along with the Trump staff on Air Force One, with Trump present, a comprehensive lie about the cover story, which was, you know, adopting Russian children. A little something I know about. I have some adopted Russian children. Yeah, I thought you did. So I was thinking maybe Ahmed Menchin and, uh, you know, uh, Vessel Niskaya, maybe they were adopted and this is what the meeting was about. <laughs> well, I think they were adopting some big money. And that appears to be <laughs> That's the motivation for a lot of it. Yeah, And, you know, no matter how you slice it, I, there was an interesting comment on Twitter today uh, by Brett Baer of Fox News who said, Listen, this meeting would have been like if you're planning a bank robbery, but you don't actually come up with a plan and you don't actually rob a bank. There's no laws broken. And, uh, you know, one commenter said, no, it's conspiracy. That's right. Conspiracy to rob a bank. And the email was the plan to rob the bank. Therefore, it is actually a conspiracy. And I've said this for some time. This is not going to be a deep espionage operation as much as I'd love that. Uh, and maybe some people will be linked and will be brought up, uh, you know, close to the espionage act. Mm-hmm. This is a RICO case. Right. Racketeering influence, corrupt organization case. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I think that's what Mueller is looking into. And, uh, you know, here's the here's the creepy thing about that story about that they knew Kasowitz knew and Alan Garten knew three weeks ago. Uh, you know, these lawyers have a duty to inform their client if something new uh, that has to do with their case emerges so that especially a client who talks to the public all the time. Uh, why? Right. right. So why didn't they do their, their their legal duty to tell Donald Trump about this meeting three weeks ago when they knew it? Well, you know, there's a lot of evidence building right now. I think the answer is because they they did tell him. (laughs) Yeah, they did tell him and they were not surprised that he was not surprised. And I'm sure that will eventually come out because now this opens a lot of people to criminal liability. Mm -hmm. White House staffers, people who may have been briefed. Mm -hmm. Not five minutes ago, we learned there may, from CNN, that there may have been as many as 
eight people in that meeting. It's the freaking Bolshoi Ballet. So, I swear to I'm God, sorry, I, I, it is. It's it's like it's like the whole cast from Doctor Zhivago went to uh, you know Trump Tower, and, and and nobody had less than twenty consonants in their name. I, I just I can't believe that. And he go, oh, he tells Sean Hannity, no, oh, that's it. It's just one woman wanted to talk about adoption, and, and, and now it turns out it's uh, Doctor Zhivago's the entire uh, IMDb. Yeah. Well, there you have it. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show you, you know, this is interesting. You know, but I don't know. I don't know why he's lying because his father can pardon him. Why don't they just get it all out and say, you know, yeah, we did this, and uh, you know, it's to cover up money laundering, uh, and because the thirty-four percent of this country that support this, 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 this con man will continue to support him no matter what he does. He was correct when he said he could shoot somebody on Fifth Avenue, and so could uh, you know Jared, and so could uh, Trump Jr. because. Quite frankly, their dad will pardon them. Well, now you're looking at a situation where the Constitution and the laws of the United States no longer are laws. And, you know, it's, uh, one of the founding fathers said, a nation without, without laws is no nation. You know, a Constitution without laws is it just a piece of paper. And if we don't enforce that, I mean, if this turns out to be true, and this turns into a massive this is beyond Watergate, way beyond Oh, Watergate. way beyond, Gamble. yes, yes. Well, you know, at some point, it's going to have to come to a head. And people are going to have to exercise their constitutional rights to redress. Uh, you know, and all of this being said, we do have to place some faith in the investigatory process. Uh, Rob Mueller and his team are, all, are, are out there. All indications, you know, Preet Bharara, it was fired, <laughs> but his deputy was just brought on to the investigative team. So everything that he left in his lockers is still available to the to the special counsel. And more importantly, Preet Bharara now becomes a witness. He yes. is not held together by all of the legal niceties that his position as a U.S. attorney would, would have held him to. You know what just happened? Jamie Gorelick just dumped uh, Jared as a client. <laughs> Wait, just now? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she just dumped him. And, and, and you know, part of it was because um, quietly her friends were saying, what the F are you doing, Jamie? Really, what are you doing? Because for those of you who don't know, Jamie Gorelick was uh, Bill Clinton's deputy attorney general. And they were like, what are you doing? But the other part of it was she said, you know, that uh, Mueller had come from Wilmer Hale, and that's her law firm, and she didn't want any chance of a conflict. So she dumped him. Now, well, I, don't, I don't believe either of those stories. I think she's like, I can't defend this. <laughs> well, you know, if if, if, uh, if, a, if an attorney finds themselves in an impossible situation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they have to make the best of it. But they don't, you know, this is a private case. They don't have to, uh, you know, oblige themselves. Yeah. Especially if it is, you know, uh, personally, socially distasteful or not profitable. Uh, you know, and I certainly hope that it's not an indicator of, uh, you know, attorney, you know, violation of attorney client privilege. But as some will gladly say, as soon as this conversation is over, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, this is another case for putting the faith in that the, what I call the wood chipper of democracy. You know, the founding fathers <laughs> created this system of checks and balances. And now this the, the special prosecutor law gives, you know, unbridled, almost unlimited power, including the power of subpoena and investigatory power, using the FBI and the intelligence community. They are afraid of the things we have not found out about. Hmm. And these meetings were, I mean, were so damning. You know, you have to understand that Junior may have released all that information to immunize himself to a certain extent by saying, I'm transparent, and the rest are a bunch of rats. So... You know, I, I don't know. I think we should all hold on. Uh, you know, it's only 425 on the East Coast, and we know news breaks <laughs> at 530 Tell on me Friday. About, Tell me about it. I, 10 p.m. every other day. I know. I, I mean, it's unbelievable. News breaks late now in the day. Their, their press conferences are delayed. They're not on camera, so you got to wait. Everything happens right before my show, so I'm always frazzled at 4 o'clock Eastern because everything is breaking. And then at 5 o'clock on Friday, something breaks while I'm live. But I, I got to say, I don't get how, how this could immune, immunize um, 
uh, Jr. in any way. The New York Times was about to release these emails. He's lying when he tells Hannity and others, uh, you know, that, and he thought that would be the period at the end of the sentence, uh, you know, goes to Hannity and goes, that's it, you have everything, I did it to be. The New York Times was about to release all this, uh, these, these, the, uh, I guess there were 17 in the chain emails. Uh, and, uh, you know, Kushner is really the one who, has the most potential in my mind to become a rat, okay? Because his dad was in jail and he knows exactly what you need to do if you want to avoid, uh, you know, prison. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think Jared's going to be the rat. You know what? Um, here's, here's the indicator that you need to be watching for, and I say this all the time. Okay. Anyone that does not cooperate in the next 60 to 90 days with this investigation as these investigatory teams start putting this giant picture together. And they're going to go for the easy proof, right? They're going to go for the schemes in which there's a lot of documentation or people who's, who have already come up and have presented information. So start with Michael Flynn. If Michael Flynn is cooperating, then you will just start hearing about he's cooperating, which will, of course, make everyone else nervous. Mm -hmm. If Michael Flynn is not cooperating or... Uh, Paul Manafort or any of them decide to stonewall the FBI mm -hmm. or, and the special counsel, they will raid their homes and they will take every computer, every document. Sometimes they do that just to make a point <laughs> that if you're not cooperative. We can we have ways to make you uh, as cooperative as possible because the raids won't just happen to Michael Flynn. They'll happen to Michael Flynn Jr., his son, oh, yeah. as you know, who was one of his greatest advocates in Spends a lot of time on the computer. Yes, an avid same retweeter thing. is what he was yeah. of white yeah. nationalist well, propaganda. <laughs> so anyone who's not playing ball, they have the spectacle, the optic of having U.S. Marshals and FBI SWAT teams literally descend on their offices, bringing those big white boxes out of wheelbarrows. Oh, my God. Uh, you know, uh, the, and that is, you know, that is the strength of this investigation. If nothing happens in the next 90 days, I find it virtually impossible to believe. But now <laughs> the FBI and the special counsel have a new line of inquiry with these Kushner emails. And that's an easy one because the emails are the evidence. And now they can say, any more of these emails in your computer? And if they get stonewalled, they'll just go get a subpoena and they'll storm someone's office. Now, Paul Manafort. Can I point out that his office is on the 54th floor of Trump, uh, Trump Tower? Tower? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, those SWAT cops outside, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, maybe window dressing now, but they could be <laughs> the seizure team later. <laughs> Well, I live for that day. I, I mean, I want a perp walk. You know, you mentioned Preet Bahari is going to be a witness. Remember, Preet Bahara was the attorney on the Prevazon case against Natalia, right? And against this yeah. uh, this new Russian spy that showed up at this meeting. So when and that Pre case was just dismissed yesterday or day before. It's amazing. I mean, two days before trial, the case is just like, and eh, now let's settle it. After Sessions, uh, you know, after Trump fires Preet Bahara, and then Sessions is left to make the call. He goes, no, settle this thing for $6 million on a $230 million money laundering fraud case against an American, uh, you know, against a British citizen who complains to the American Justice Department. It makes no sense. But remember, Preet Bahara's files on Prevazon went with Preet over to Robert Mueller's office. That's correct. And that's a beautiful and, thing, because <laughs> all these people now, that are sitting in, in, in Trump Jr.'s 25th floor office are now in this Prevazon case. Uh, you know, they're, they're either attorneys of record or they're, they're lobbying to get it shut down. I mean, it's, a, it's incredible. It's amazing. It's a, they know very few people, uh, you know, these uh, Trumps. Yeah, well. The wood chipper of justice <laughs> so yeah. and democracy. Uh, this is what's going to happen. They're going to they're going to process all that information, and uh, some things are going to come out whole and natural, like mulch, and other things that shouldn't go into a wood chipper are going to come out the way they should, like dog so, food. Uh, yeah, like byproducts. Well, you know, you cannot, you know, you can the the, the 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 what do they say? The machinery of justice. The gears are fine. And if someone thinks that they're going to come and play this game, these rules were established very early on with the emoluments clause. 
enshrined in the Constitution. I like to say that James Madison and, uh, you know, um, and uh, Thomas Jefferson were all sitting around drinking. And they said, hey, what if some rich guy who decides he wants to be the next George III comes into office? And they go, oh, no, we got to put some we got to put some stops in there. Well, now you are seeing truly for the first time in American history, uh, a self-serving family, family, a royalty family uh, now coming up with the gears. If the Republican Party decides, as uh, some of the Trump supporters say, that they refuse to believe empirical data, refuse to believe law enforcement, well, the laws are the law. And either they will enforce those laws uh, or, you know, there are, there are ways to resolve those. Well, I got to say, I mean, if you, it's one thing to be a kleptocrat. It's another thing to, uh, you know, uh, uh, have meetings that involve uh, fewer Russians than a Tolstoy novel. I mean, uh, more Russians <laughs> than a Tolstoy. I've never seen anything like this family. I really never have. And the fact that America is so slow to realize uh, that this man is enriching himself by aligning our foreign policy with Russia and, uh, you know, white nationalist countries like Poland over our uh 50, 70 year allies like, uh, you know, European democracies. It's very sickening, I have to say. But I'm living, well, you know, I'm living for the per perp walks, and now I have the raids to look forward to, so I'm very excited about that. Randy, the number one way of redress in this country is voting. And I agree. You, I, uh, I bring this to everybody's attention every time. If you have a complaint here, you don't like the way the system's being run, you didn't vote in the last election, or <laughs> you did a protest vote in the last election, you chose this. And well, I know 50 percent of the voting public did not come to the poll. No, it's 120 just, million Americans. No, it's just so disgusting. Bring someone that didn't vote in 2018 and all of this can be resolved. But I just want I just want to say this, Malcolm. The way the founding fathers wanted. Yeah, but here's yeah. here's the problem, and and it is a problem because you know enough Americans don't vote as as you just said, and now you've got this whole Russian operation uh, that was able to hack into voter registration rolls and hack into the software that goes into the touch screen machines. All the I mean, this is a very you're you know you're you're a counterterrorism guy, and and so you understand these things take a very very long time uh, to create these plans to uh, execute them. To to try them to stick your toe in the water see how far you can get they got pretty damn far if we don't stop them then the entire uh, uh 2018 2020 election they have enough expertise at this point to really get in there and really flip votes which did not happen in this election but i mean they were able to target likely hillary voters with propaganda they were able to uh, do dark ads on fa on facebook uh to people that were uh, you know digitally identified by the FBI efforts of the Russians. So, I mean, honestly, we have to solve this because uh, 2018 is just around the corner. And if the Russians uh, have perfected this at this at this point, who knows what the what the results of the tw and he'll just say our president will just say, so you told you the polls were wrong. Well, like I said, it has to be unambiguous and it has to be overwhelming. So bring everybody who's listening to the sound of my voice. Bring and convince a person who did not vote in the last election to the next election. Primaries, get used to voting in primaries, but make it a voting party. Yeah. Because that's the only way that we can do it. Yeah. And, and the system is there. It's not rigged. The system has worked perfectly for 241 years. But you have to fight for your right. Yeah. And that's why I love this country. I mean, we have, this is a, this is an epic, and now we are in a Tolstoy novel. Yes, we are. It's Anna Karenina, everybody. Anna Karenina. That's what we'll call Natalia from here on out. Listen, I love you. Thank you for giving me something to live for. Uh, the raids. I can't wait. And I will reach out to you the second I see a SWAT team anywhere near any of these people to thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, <laughs> you just did there. Thanks, Randy. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a great weekend, Malcolm. Anytime. And bye thanks bye. for your time. Malcolm Nance, everybody, the author of uh, The Plot to Hack America, which was written way before you knew there was a plot to hack America. I would say he's pretty good at counterterrorism. I would say he's pretty good at his damn job. Now, you know our guys are that good. What do you think? Russians suck? You think they're terrible? You think they're bad? 
Now, this Akmenistan guy, he told the AP he did serve in the Soviet military in a unit that was part of counterintelligence, but he never formally trained as a spy. What, do they have a graduation and a yearbook? Never formally graduated? If they did have a yearbook, he'd be voted most likely to be outed as a spy. (laughs) These people, you know, again, they're good, but we're better. We're much, much better. For a commercial free, on demand, whenever, wherever listening experience, visit randyrhodes.com for your personal premium podcast today. Hey, do you own gold? You know, if you don't, you're in a bad position. Stocks are at an all time high, gold at recent lows. So maybe to you, it seems like things are going great. But I can assure you, if another stock market crash comes, if another 2008 happens, are you protected? I don't think so. Don't wait until after something bad happens, because then stocks fall and gold goes up. Get gold now while it's low and diversify your portfolio today. Because once you have gold in your portfolio, you can rest assured you are protected. So call my friends at ITM Trading at one triple eight own gold They're experts at diversifying investment portfolios with precious metals. They can help you in building a custom strategy based on your goals, your objectives. Please don't follow the herd and don't wait till it's too late. Take action today and bring safety to your financial future. Call ITM Trading today at one triple eight own gold and speak to a precious metals expert and ask for a free gold kit. one triple eight own gold one triple eight O W N G O L D. I'm Rick Smith, and this is Labor History in Two. On this day in labor history, the year was 1995. That was the day 2,500 pressmen, reporters, drivers, and clerks went out on strike against the Detroit News and the Free Press. Both newspapers had created a virtual monopoly in 1988 by merging their advertising and circulation departments into the Detroit Newspaper Association. Even as the DNA raked in record profits, they forced years of concessions, including wage freezes and layoffs. When the association implemented a merit pay raise system, the Newspaper Guild voted to strike. Five other unions, including CWA and the Teamsters, soon followed. The newspapers, however, were ready. Just before the strike, they cut off the dues checkoff. They also contracted with the company Alternative Workforce to provide scabs. They also hired private security guards from Huffmaster and Vance International to enforce the scab herding. A solid union boycott cut revenues for both newspapers. On August 19th, hundreds of strikers stopped scabbing until police attacked the picket line lines, breaking arms, and arresting at least four. Then, on Labor Day weekend, thousands of strikers and supporters successfully repulsed police forces amassed from across the state to break up the picket lines. By mid-September, both newspapers were forced to airlift the Sunday edition until strike-breaking injunctions limited picket lines. Over a hundred had been arrested over the course of several weeks. Unable to stop production, strikers gradually returned to work until the strike was finally called off in February of 1997. In his two-volume set, Workers in America, Robert Weir notes that many labor activists criticized strike tactics. They argued direct action to stop production should have been the priority rather than boycotts and political pressure. Once the strike ended, the DNA claimed all but a few had forfeited their jobs. Hello, Progressive Voices Tune In listeners. I'm Casey Hobbs. And I'm Shane Mason, and we're the hosts of Nurse Talk Radio. Here's what we're talking about this week. All right, let's talk about health care. Is it really health care we're talking about, or is it something else? There's a much wider agenda at work here than just health care, as we've talked about before. The Senate bill, certainly, that, that Mitch McConnell is trying to get 50 votes in his caucus to, to get passed is really more about wealth care than it is about health care. It's got a huge tax break for the wealthiest, and yet it eviscerates so much of the Affordable Care Act and the Medicaid expansion and so many things that people now rely on to get even the most basic of health care services. 
what they really move to do is to gut the Affordable Care Act. They can't repeal all parts of it, but they certainly are gutting it, taking away the employer mandate that employers over a certain size provide health benefits for, for their employees. And by the way, there are estimates that up to 3 million people who now get coverage through employers will also be at risk of losing their coverage. So there is even more damage. 22 million people may lose their insurance coverage, in part because insurers will not be required to charge the same rates for people who are older or people who have pre-existing conditions. So, for instance, people like myself who are 62, uh, some health issues ongoing and a cancer survivor are really going to be in a tough spot. So that's another big problem with it. The Medicaid expansion is an enormous uh, gut of the Affordable Care Act. Doing away with that across the country is just an, a horrible thing for the disabled, for the elderly. Check out our show at nursetalksite.com and listen every Saturday and Sunday right here on Progressive Voices. All things Randy at randyroads.com. Go, go for launch. Speaking truth to power, the Randy Rhodes Show. Okay, let me let me introduce you uh, to Bill Browder. Why? Because Bill Browder, you know, there, there's this letter from Chuck Grassley back in April, April 4th, 2017. The Republican, Chuck Grassley, who sits on judiciary, okay, actually wrote a letter to the Department of Homeland Security, to John Kelly, General John Kelly, okay? Uh, that's who Donald Trump put into the Department of Homeland Security. And here's what the letter said. It's very brief, okay? But what's attached to the letter is not so brief, it's 17 pages, and I've gone through it twice, so I can explain it to you, and it's really important, okay? So here's Grassley's letter to uh, John Kelly, the Secretary of Department of Homeland Security. He said, um, I write to obtain information regarding Mr. Reinat Akmetchen, a Russian immigrant to the United States who has been accused of acting as an unregistered agent for Russian interests and apparently has ties to Russian intelligence. In July of 2016, Mr. William Browder, the CEO of Hermitage Capital Management, filed a formal complaint with the Justice Department. That's, uh, you know, uh, Comey, right? 2016. Filed a formal complaint with the Justice Department alleging that Mr. Akmetchen, among others, failed to register under the Foreign Agents Registration Act. This is called FARA. Despite undertaking a lobbying campaign on behalf of Russian interests, the committee is looking into the circumstances surrounding this lobbying effort and the potential FARA violations involved. It's important for the committee to gather additional information on Mr. Akmetchen as part of this process. Mr. Akmetchen is a Russian immigrant to the United States who has admitted having being a, quote, Soviet counterintelligence officer. In fact, it has been reported that he worked for GRU, which is the military branch of the intelligence uh, outfits in Russia, right? GRU, and allegedly specializes in active measures campaigns, subversive political influence operations, involving disinformation and propaganda. Sky is in charge of disseminating fake news. It's what he does in political campaigns specifically. This is who's in the Trump Jr. office, okay? But there's more that, what, that, than that that he does. According to press accounts, Mr. Akmetchen is, quote, known in foreign policy circles as a key pro-Russian operator. Radio F Free Europe described him as a, quote, Russian gun for hire who lurks in the shadows of Washington's lobbying world. Mr. Akmetchen reportedly entered the United States in the 90s, became a U.S. citizen in 2009 while also retaining his Russian citizenship. How, how do you pull that off? Despite all of this information and despite Mr. Akmetchen's admission to the press that he had been a Russian intelligence officer, in response to a different press inquiry, Akmetchen said he never worked for Soviet military intelligence, something uh, he would declare that something he would need to declare when he applied for his U.S. citizenship. 
Boy, these people around Trump and Trump's kids and Trump himself and his son-in-law and everybody he does business with with massive amounts of consonants in their name, they all decide to lie on their forms. It's just so fascinating. So he never declared that he was an intelligence officer when he applied for U.S. citizenship. And it says, the circumstances of Mr. Akhmetian's immigration into the U.S. and his eventual U.S. citizenship are relevant to the committee, given his alleged ties to Russian intelligence and actions as an unregistered agent of Russian interests. This information is also relevant because he was reportedly working with, now stand by everybody for news, he was reportedly working with Fusion GPS, the company that oversaw the creation of the controversial dossier alleging a conspiracy between President Trump and the Russian government. He, he what? He worked with Fusion. All right, I, 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 let me take this from the top. First, I'm going to introduce you to Mr. Browder because Mr. Browder, attached to this letter that Chuck Grassley wrote, is 17 pages. And what are those 17 pages? They are a complaint. It's Bill Browder, the owner of Hermitage Capital Management. That is the company uh, that saw their books being used. Uh, for Prevazon to take write-downs to qualify them for big tax refunds right out of the Russian treasury. Then they have all this money. Now, Prevazon is a Russian government company, so Putin wanted this money taken out from the Russian people, taken from the Russian treasury, and moved into Prevazon's, uh, uh, moved it onto Prevazon's books, and then laundered someplace else. And, of course, the money was used to buy high value New York real estate. That much we know. We just don't know, you know, if it was Trump. <clears throat> so here's Bill Browder testifying in front of Congress. Uh, this was this was a, a hearing that uh, 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 Congressman Royce had. Now, Congressman Royce is uh, head of the Foreign Relations Committee in the House. Mr. Royce had a, um, a, a hearing about the state of affairs with Putin's Russia. And Bill Browder testified at that hearing. And here's what he said. How do we know all this? We know it because Sergei did something very unusual. He documented it all in 450 complaints. Okay, so let me, let me just set this up because I, I didn't realize it started right there. All right, so what he's going to be talking about is the fact that when he noticed that a company was invading his accounting and that they were taking losses on his books, he hired an attorney slash forensic accountant named Sergei Magnitsky. And Sergei Magnitsky uncovered the largest Russian tax fraud in the history of Russia. And that came right out of the Russian treasury, went to Putin's company, Prevazon, and it is a government company. It's run by, and that's uh, Natalia is the lawyer, and it turns out so is Mr. Akhmetshin. They're lawyers for Prevazon. Isn't that something? Okay, so uh, Sergei ends up being the one that's arrested. Not anybody associated with Prevazon. Not the, uh, you know, the, the, the father and the son that are running Prevazon for, for Putin or, or, you know, stealing the money from the Treasury away from the Russian people and then buying New York real estate so no one can trace it, right? Uh, so Sergei uncovers this. They arrest Sergei Men Mej uh, Mejnitsky. Oh, God, there's, there's more Russians in this than, than, than Dostoevsky ever thought of. All right. And when he's jailed in 2009... He gets very, very ill. He gets so ill uh, that he's on the verge of death. The Russians deny him medical care. And in fact, uh, when he got so sick that they did transfer him to a prison that did have medical facilities, because not all their prisons do, uh, they actually, instead of putting him in the emergency room, Sergei was tied to a gurney and Russian officials were dispatched to his room in the hospital in the in the emergency room of the uh, of the medical center in the Russian prison and they beat him to death with rubber hoses okay and so here's bill browder who has never ever ever gotten over this okay how do we know all this we know it because sergey did something very unusual he documented it all in 450 complaints in his 358 days in detention mm. and as a result of that we have the most well-documented human rights abuse and extrajudicial killing case in the history of Russia. Now, this is a tragic case and a heartbreaking case for me and his family and for anyone around him. 
But the reason why this is politically significant is not what they did to him. This happens all the time. It's the cover-up mm. that, that the government embarked on afterwards. The Russian government on the day he died said he died of natural causes. They weren't aware that he was ill. They've since exonerated all of the police officers, interior ministry officials, prosecutors, and judges from any liability. They've been, some of them have been promoted. Some of them have been given state honors. <clears throat> the, um, <clears throat> in, to add insult to injury, instead of prosecuting anyone who did this to him, they're now prosecuting Sergei himself. Two and a half years after his death, they're now prosecuting Sergei Magnitsky for the, for the trumped-up crimes they arrested him for in the first ever posthumous cr uh, prosecution in Russian history. Not even Stalin did that. Oh. It's clear that there's no possibility of justice in Russia for Sergei's case or many, many other cases like it. And as a result, I've sought justice outside of Russia. And in, in 11 parliaments around the world that are now considering visa sanctions and asset freezes on the people who killed Sergei Magnitsky as well as other gross human rights abusers, and most significantly, this Congress is also considering the same thing. I would argue that in the um, absence of any possibility of justice in these cases, that something needs to be done, and that's the thing that needs to be done. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for that powerful testimony. That's your friend Ileana ross Leighton, who took that testimony from uh, Bill Browder. Uh, maybe this is why she's retiring. I don't know. Maybe she knows entirely too much about this and can't defend Trump or can't, uh, you know, could be the right time for her to leave because she is retiring and she is a congresswoman from Miami and she took that testimony from Bill Browder. Now, here's what Bill Browder was trying to do there. He was trying to get our Congress to pass something called the Mag Magnitsky Laws. And that would uh, then put sanctions on anybody who had anything to do with the death of Sergei Magnitsky and the money laundering, the, th the theft of the $230 million out of the Russian Treasury, uh, anybody associated with Prevazon, anybody associated with, um, you know, the killing, the prosecutors, the police officers who beat him to death in prison. Everybody in that group would be forbidden from entering the United States and, of course, doing business in the United States. These sanctions that Bill Browder was successful in getting enacted by our Congress, the Magnitsky laws are exactly what uh, Akhmetchen and uh, uh, Vessel Niskaya and others were lobbying our government to overturn. In fact, there was a movie that was screened at the museum just days after the junior meeting, okay? Veselnitskaya, now we know Akhmetchen, uh, they're all in the office with a translator and with a representative. These are the eight people, okay? The eight people are Jared, Junior, Manafort, Veselnitskaya, Akhmetchen, a translator, a representative for the Agararlov family. Who are the Agararlovs? They're the uh, Donald Trumps of Russia. Okay, they're oligarchs too. And then you know is a you know a a, a dancing pop star. He wants to be a Justin Timberlake for, of Kazakhstan, I guess. And uh, and then the uh, fat bastard was in there. Okay, so you know it was catered on top of it. Now I'm trying to do some research into this translator because I think that might be an interesting person to look into, but. Make a long story, very long, nice and sharp and clean and easy to, uh, 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 uh. ever since Bill Browder was successful in getting the Magnitsky laws, Russia has been lobbying our government to overturn them. They went as far as to make a, a, a fake movie, kind of like uh, Clinton Cash or the Clinton Diaries or, you know, all those fake movies about the Clintons, uh, you know, where they, they had murder lists and they were killing people and Vince Foster was having an affair and she killed him, you know, all that crap. OK, so Russia took a little note from us and said, hey, let's make a fake movie. They made a movie that actually alleges that Bill Browder killed Sergei Magnitsky himself. And that Bill Browder really is the embezzler, that he's the one that stole the $230 million from the Russian Treasury. Now, that is so ridiculous. Nobody buys it. But, you know, Washington being Republican and all, they actually had a screening of this movie at the museum in Washington, D.C., two days after the same people who made the movie are in Donald Trump Jr.'s office. 
Their goal was to rewrite the Magnitsky story to say that Browder embezzled the $230 million, killed Magnitsky. Now, Akhmetshin and Vesinolskaya, they both worked with the uh, producers of this movie, who was also... You know how they say, uh, oh, well, she was at one of these hearings. That was the Royce hearing. She was at that hearing. And, and so was he. So was he. Because they were lobbying Congress. And you'll never believe a former congressman took him all around Capitol Hill, introduced him to all the Republican congressmen. Okay, that's number one. Number two, brought them into this hearing that uh, Congressman Royce held at the Foreign Relations Committee, sat them down right behind Robert McFall, uh, or I don't know, is Robert McFall, our, our, former, our former ambassador to Russia, who was testifying, and that's what you see is them say, now how did they get into those meetings? Dana Rohrbacker and this former congressman, who's now a lobbyist, brought them into, and of course Fox News is saying, Loretta Lynch let her in, Loretta Lynch, no. No, it was Republican congressmen that invited him in. And that's why they're at this uh, hearing. Now, the other interesting part is this fusion part, right? That's the company that Chris Steele worked for. And Chris Steele, as you know, was a former MI6 officer. And he created that dossier on Trump. Well, here's what happened. Prevazon, for whom both Natalia and Akhmetchen worked for as, uh, you know, attorneys, uh, they hired uh, a fusion to represent Prevazon in the United States. They hired Glenn Simpson, who is a former Wall Street Journal reporter who started Fusion GPS. And they hired him to lobby the Congress on overturning these Magnitsky laws on behalf of Prevazon. My little theory is maybe what Glenn Simpson of Fusion GPS found, started to find about Prevazon, uh, about Bill Browder, about, uh, you know, the, the embezzlement. Maybe it was so unbelievable to him and so bizarre. And Trump was already now running for president. And maybe he was able to connect all the dots. And that prompted him to hire Chris Steele to do an investigation into Donald Trump. Now, you know, Chris Steele found so much Haraba, you know, I mean, he said his hair was on fire, right? So much hair raising crap about Donald Trump when he wrote this dossier, never mind the, the PP tape, but all this crap about Felix Sater and, and, and Russian operatives around him all the time. And, you know, it's just like amazing. They don't know anybody that has, you know, less than 19 consonants in their name. What is the deal with this family? <clears throat> so I'm thinking that. Chris, that, 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 that Glenn Simpson of Fusion hires Chris Steele to do this uh, opposition research on Trump while he's representing Prevazon. Now, they're not lawyers, okay? One's a counterintelligence guy for MI6, and the other one is a Wall Street Journal reporter who starts this uh, opposition research company. <clears throat> so it seems to me that what he was finding was scaring the bejesus out of him. Either that or... You remember how they said that um, Chris Steele was first hired by the GOP to do opposition research on Trump? Who could that have been? So I'm thinking the client that hired Fusion is Bill Browder. And that Bill Browder knew that there was a Russian effort to overturn the sanctions that were placed upon Russia as a result of Sergei Magnitsky's death, which obviously is something near and dear to his heart. He wrote a whole book about it, and he hired Fusion. And Fusion then said, you know, we're finding a lot of crap about Prevazon. Bill Browder was the guy that was ripped off. Listen, I'm going to hire a former MI6 guy. I'm going to put him on the case. He's going to figure out what's going on here because you won't believe we think Prevazon was laundering money through Donald Trump. Donald Trump is running for president. Yes, we'll do the opposition research. And he reached out to Chris Steele, the former MI6 officer, to do it. Now, it, it does turn out that Prevazon was controlled by the Russian government and was under investigation by none other than Preet Bahara for money laundering that went through Bill Browder's company. And of course, Donald Trump becomes president. And what's the first thing he does? He fires Preet Bahara. But Preet Bahara has the file. And that entire file has been given to Robert Mueller. I would bet my last dollar on that. So Malcolm Nance is correct. This is a RICO 
act case. Clear. Four. Take off. Randy Rhodes Air Force. Air Force. Air Force. Randy Rhodes. Dot com. Now, the top of the hour on the Progressive Voices channel on TuneIn presents the Green News Report. Ice shelves there and elsewhere around Antarctica are really kind of the canaries in the coal mine. Iceberg the size of Delaware finally breaks off of Antarctica. The system will be three times more powerful than any system on Earth. Tesla will build the world's biggest battery in 100 days, or it's free. Trump's EPA moves to revive the controversial pebble mine in Alaska. Plus, France moves to phase out coal and the internal combustion engine. All of those stories and more straight ahead from bradblog.com. I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyen. Stand by for six minutes of independent green news, politics, analysis, and snarky comment. Ever since the last ice age ended about 40,000 years ago, we've been warming ever since then. So we're continuing and the earth goes through these cycles where we cool and we warm and that's what we are right now. We're on a warming trend. Hey James Quinones, weatherman from KPNX in Phoenix. Why don't you learn what the hell you're talking about before you go on the air and misinform Phoenix. This is your Green News Report. Okay, Desi Doy and Phoenix just went through one of their worst heat waves ever, and you've got weathermen either not explaining what's going on to the people of Phoenix or just lying to them like James Quinones. Sorry, it makes me really angry. Yeah, I can tell. I'm not even a weatherman, but I try to learn what the hell I'm talking about before I say it. Anyway... What do you have for us today in the Green News Report? Well, one of the and lar- don't screw it up. Well, one of the largest <laughs> icebergs ever recorded just broke free from Antarctica, according to British scientists and NASA satellite images. The much-watched, fast-growing crack across the massive Larsen C ice shelf finally broke off sometime between Monday and Wednesday, calving an iceberg the size of Delaware, more than 600 feet deep, containing enough ice to cover all 50 states in more. Than than four inches of ice. It's so big that maps of Antarctica will have to be revised. It won't raise sea levels by itself because the ice shelf was already sitting in the water, but its loss will likely accelerate the slide of land ice behind it into the sea. It's a further sign that Antarctica's ice sheets are destabilizing. Now, there is some controversy about whether this would have happened with or without global warming. Is there anything definitive yet either way? As of now, there's no consensus, there's disagreement among scientists, but it is consistent with what they've predicted. So when there's no facts to support something, we don't claim there is. At the same time, when there are facts to support something, we don't lie about it to the public, James Quinones, weatherman of KPNX in Phoenix. Meanwhile, the Environmental Protection Agency is taking a first step in reviving the controversial proposed pebble mine in Alaska's Bristol Bay watershed. That's despite overwhelming opposition from residents, tribes, environmental groups, and the commercial fishing industry, and despite being rejected by the Obama administration on the grounds that the mine's toxic waste would harm the world's largest salmon fishery. The EPA has opened up a new public comment period for folks to weigh in on whether they think that mine should go forward. Well, poisoning the food supply is one thing. Making money is another. Keep your priorities straight, Ms. Doyen. In Australia, Tesla CEO Elon Musk is making good on his offer to build the world's biggest battery for the province of South Australia. Cool. South Australia suffered massive blackouts earlier this year after a tropical storm downed power lines, and Australia's conservative leadership falsely blamed that on renewable energy. Musk has now signed a contract to build a $50 million battery system in 100 days, or it's free. In a press conference, Musk said he made the bet to prove the concept. And to prove that the people who were blaming renewable energy were wrong. There was really this opportunity to make um, a significant statement about renewable energy to the world to show that you can really do uh, a heavy-duty, large-scale 
utility level battery and battery system. In China, a rural province served as a real world testing ground to prove that it is possible to switch to 100% renewable energy on a regional scale. For a full week in mid June, 6 million people in a rural region in northwest China used only renewable energy, hydroelectric, wind, and solar power for all of their electricity needs. It was an amount equivalent to burning more than 500,000 tons of coal. The test reportedly came off without a hitch, with no grid reliability issues and without all the pollution. Finally, France has announced it will phase out all internal combustion engines by 2040. It's part of a new series of energy measures unveiled by French President Emmanuel Macron to make his country carbon neutral by 2050. France will also stop granting licenses for new oil and gas exploration and will phase out coal for generating electricity by 2022. Wow, the rest of the world is doing some fascinating things when it comes to renewable energy. Yes, they are. Thank you very much. For more on all of these stories and the many that we didn't have time for, please check out our website at greennews.bradblog.com. Find us, follow us, and share us worldwide on the Facebooks and the Twitters at Green News Report. I'm Brad Friedman. And I'm Desi Doyne. And this has been your Green News Report. This has been the Green News Report on the top of the hour on the Progressive Voices Channel on TuneIn. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Believe it. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Roach Show. Turn up your mind. And have you had any dealings with the Russians? Well, I've done a lot of business with the Russians. They're commies, the Russians you know that. Well. They're, they're commies. Tough. They're smart they're commies. and they're tough. And they're not looking so dumb right now, are they? When well, it's that? Vladimir Putin. Have you ever met the it's guy? A tough guy. I met him once. He he stole that guy's uh, uh, Mr. Cross's. I don't Mr. Think Kraft's, so. uh, I don't really think Bob. Uh, Bob Kraft's a good friend of mine. I oh, I remember seeing that. you at a football. I'm game. I'm with him all the time. Yeah, and remember with guy. your hair that would. Woo, yeah, that's right. What do you have a memory? That was a really Let's windy we, day in New York. Do we have that footage? Let's see if we have that. Oh, no. But Vladimir Putin claims that uh, he and uh, Bob Kraft says they just swiped his ring from him. Those are trying to, this would be great footage if we can get it. <laughs> How you been otherwise? I've been good. <laughs> <laughs> this is the only thing on CBS right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, that's tough. I remember. I watched that evening. All right. Well, listen. What else is here? You got everything going on. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Donald Trump. Thank Good you. to see you Thank again, you. Don. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, I met Vladimir Putin. Yeah, I met him once. He's a tough guy, and uh, I do a lot of business with Russia. And then, of course, Eric Trump said the same damn thing. Uh, And then Donald Jr. said the same damn thing. Okay, they all said, all this money is coming in from Russia. All this money is coming in from Russia. Russia over here, Russia over there. Every All this money is just pouring in, pouring in, pouring in. Do you remember, you want another flashback? Something you probably uh, remember, but you forgot that you knew? Do you remember the uh, golf writer, James Dotson? Uh, And uh, he said that he was in a golf cart uh, with Junior and uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, the financing for all these golf courses. He's a golf writer and he wanted to know, you know, like the background on all these uh, Trump golf courses. And he's saying, like, who who's giving you all this money to invest? Uh, And he said, uh, you know, uh, uh, well, I'll let you listen to it. Here it is. I hate this. I mean, I really do. What author James Dodson hates is being caught up in the conversation about Russia and its alleged ties to the Trump organization. His connection to it all started three years ago on a golf course in Charlotte, North Carolina, called Trump National Golf Club. Of course. Dotson, who has written best-selling books about the world of golf, was invited to play by Trump's PR rep and ended up riding with Trump's son, Eric Trump. Eric was a very sweet kid. We played nine holes, and uh, it was fun. In the course of that fun, Dodson asked the younger Trump who was funding the Trump's renovations of distressed golf courses he buys. Here's how Dodson remembers the conversation. I said to Eric, well, you're the head of his golf services uh, development company. Who's funding all this, this growth? Because nobody else in America is doing it. 
I said, which American banks? And he said, we don't rely on American banks. And I said, no kidding. Uh, I think I said, so who is it, the Israelis or the Chinese? Because they are the ones that were really spending money. I remember very clearly what he said. He said, no, we don't, we don't need American banks. We, get the, uh, we have all the funding we need out of Russia. Uh, we have <laughs> investors there who really love the game of golf. Yes, you heard that right, Russia. James Dodson recalls Eric Trump telling him Russia was their funding source. Oh, my and God. And that he had access to $100 million. Holy crap. $100 million from Russian oligarchs. I mean, are you shocked at all? Uh, no, no, nobody is. But I mean, this is just an amazing story. But the only reason why we have a congressional record of what really went on is because of a man named Bill Browder. Bill Browder was the guy who was ripped off in the Preet Bahara a uh, case of $230 million worth of money laundering in Manhattan real estate. Now, if it wasn't Manhattan, then Preet Bahara would never have been the prosecutor, of course, because he is the Southern District of New York, which is Wall Street. It is Manhattan. It is, uh, you know, uh, it, it, it's the borough of Manhattan. Uh, and so that whole file exists. Now, this is what's so freaking interesting is that this, this Prevazon company that did this, uh, you know, heist was controlled by the Russian government. They were under investigation by Preet in the Southern District of New York for money laundering, uh, you know, into high-end condos and commercial real estate. And what's very interesting is Switzerland had already seized $7 million of, the, of Prevazon's assets. They had frozen $7 million worth, right? Meanwhile, in our Congress, Dana Rohrbacher, uh, you know, uh, they were going to do the Magnitsky Act and it was time to vote. Dable, D Dave, Dana Rohrbacher moved to table the effort to uh, enact the Magnitsky Act. OK, now here, you know, yesterday I gave you like a really quick timeline, but you have to add to it. So I'll, you have your little piece of paper, right? June 3rd, the emails start between Junior and all these people. OK, it's just crazy. And the meeting is confirmed for June 9th at 4 o'clock uh, 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 on June 7th. On June 7th, they knew they were going to have a meeting in two days at 4 o'clock on the 25th floor of Trump Tower in Junior's office, right? On the 7th, Trump stands up and says, next week, knowing he's going to get dirt in two days, next week I will have damaging stuff on Hillary. Well, he never came forward with this damaging stuff on Hillary. Do you know why? Because the Pulse nightclub shooting was the next week. And that's why he didn't uh, go down that road. Uh, but then June 9th comes and they do have the meeting. Now we know during the meeting, we know that Akmetchen was there and uh, Veselnitskaya was there. And what we learned today was she brought with her a plastic folder with printed out documents that detailed what she believed was the flow of illicit funds to the Democratic National Committee. She did produce evidence of dirt. She presented the contents of these documents to the Trump associates who were in that meeting, and she suggested that they make this information public, uh, this, this, this oppo research on Hillary Clinton and the Democratic National Committee. Well, that's so interesting because on June 9th, the same day as the meeting, Trump tweets out that Hillary deleted 30,000 emails. Then we know on June 13th, they show this movie, this anti-Magnitsky movie, saying that Bill Browder is actually the murderer. That Bill Browder, not the Russian government, killed Magnitsky in jail somehow. Yeah, they, they, he went into the jail and he beat, them with, he beat Magnitsky with a rubber hose. And that uh, uh, Browder is the one that stole the money. But of course, the entire government knows that's not true by this point. Because Preet Bahara has been investigating Prevazon for almost, what, six, seven years at this point. The case is just about ready to go to trial. And then Trump comes along and he fires Preet Bahara and instructs Jeff Sessions at the Justice Department, settle the case, seal the documents. And that's where we are now. On June 16th, the DNC admits, uh, or well, they tell, that they, 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 they learn that Russia hacked them. 
And on the 17th, uh, Donald Trump says, Russia, if you're listening, I hope you can find the 30,000 emails that are missing. H- how did he get this information? So remember, four days after Junior's meeting, they have this screening of this anti uh, uh, Bill Browder, uh, you know, uh, Magnitsky film in D.C., pushing the story that Magnit- Magnitsky was killed by Bill Browder. Da- staff from Dana Rohrbacher's office actually attended this thing, right? Europe refused to show it because they knew it was bullcrap. Switzerland had already seized $7 million of the Prevazon money uh, because they understood where it came from. They had already done their due diligence. Okay, the day after the screening of this anti-Magnitsky movie, Congressman Royce at the House Foreign Relations Committee has a hearing on U.S. policy towards Putin's Russia. And in that, I mean, they're still here in New York, right? Uh, I mean, they're still here in the United States. Natalia and Akmenchen attend that meeting. The produce the, the the hearing. It's a it's a it's a, a congressional hearing. They're they're there, sitting right behind our ambassador, okay, who's testifying, and she's staring into his computer. She's looking right into uh, you know uh, our ambassador to Russia, uh, Richard uh, McCall, McC- McFall. She's looking right into his computer. All right, the producer of this movie that was shown at the muse- museum four days after Junior's meeting is a guy named I can't pronounce it. It's Andre. Nekrasarov, like necrophiliac with a Russian flavor. He's the producer of this fake movie that's trying to rewrite the Magnitsky laws. Now, why are they trying to rewrite them? They're trying to rewrite the narrative of what happened to Sergei Magnitsky, who was killed by the Russian government in jail, because they want to say that the sanctions that piss off Vladimir the most, these um, uh, Magnitsky sanctions, are based on a false story. And if the Russians can convince enough Republicans that it was really Bill Browder who killed him, and it was really Bill Browder who was the embezzler, and Prevazon is innocent and all this stuff, then the Magnitsky laws can be overturned by Congress. I don't think Congress is buying it, not even the freaking Republicans, because you saw a vote in the Senate this week, and they voted 98 to 2, so that's everybody, pretty much, 98 to 2, to increase sanctions on Russia, to not remove any sanctions on Russia, but to actually increase them. And that is because they know what we now know. And they have known what we now know for a very, very long time. But the Republicans are complicit in this way. They said nothing. And Dana Rohrbacher is a traitor. You remember, I forget which, um, which senator said, uh, or congressman was uh, joking around and said, uh, the, 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 the best, uh, Putin's best two friends are Dana Rohrbacher and Donald Trump. Now you know why, okay? Because when the producer of this movie, this anti, you know, tra- changing the narrative about the death of Magnitsky, his name, like I said, is Andre, right? Andre wanted, admitted for the record, in our congressional record, He wanted a prepared statement from Russia admitted to the congressional record and the statement that they that that the three of them wanted, Natalia, Akmenchin and Andre, the the, the three of them, the statement that they wanted admitted to the congressional record said that Browder actually killed Magnitsky. And that Browder really was the embezzler, after all. And that Russia and Prevazon, the Russian-owned company, had nothing to do with anything. And Jeff Sessions then fires Preet Bahara. And Jeff Sessions then settles the case, a $230 million money laundering case, for $6 million. No disclosure. Uh, no, uh, no, uh, you know... Um, No release of the files. We don't know which condos were purchased in Manhattan, which high-end condos or which commercial spaces they were investing in. And that is why these names that were in Don Jr.'s office are not innocent or happenstance or he didn't know who they were. This was not a meeting about adoption. This was the entire cast of Dr. Zhivago assembled in Junior's office to take the sanctions off of Russia. 
by rewriting an entire fabricated story and blaming the victim of a brutal murder. And there you have it. That's that's kind of where we are. And this is probably just a sliver of what there is to know about money laundering, Russian mob figures, Russian intelligence, military intelligence on the Russian side. Just 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 a touch. For a commercial free, on demand, whenever, wherever listening experience, visit randyrhodes.com for your personal premium podcast today. Protein, big flavor, big packs, little carbs. Of course, it's Herky Jerky. Herky Jerky is our favorite snack here at the Randy Rhodes Air Force, but you know you can't get the best stuff at the gas station. If you love jerky, you must order it online now from the best purveyors of jerky I have ever found, Herky Jerky. Herky Jerky, of course, is the official snack of the Randy Rhodes Air Force, and it comes in elk, buffalo, beef, bacon, oh yes, bacon, hot, mild, or 14 other incredible flavors. Now, of course, there's the new jerky, which is nitrite and preservative-free beef jerky in four flavors. And for the month of July, $5 off not only the four flavors of the new jerky, but $5 off on all of the full pack products. The bacon, the venison, the buffalo, the elk too. Promo code is July. Just go to herkyjerky.com and enter promo code July. And don't forget, Herky Jerky is celebrating eight months with the Randy Road Show. And the Herky Jerky owners would like to thank all of the loyal customers who have supported us. They're a small business. They're very grateful. And so are we. You're listening to Win Workers Independent News, a diversified media enterprises production. A unique alliance of labor unions and private investors announced Thursday that they had purchased the Chicago Sun Times newspaper, along with weekly the Chicago Reader. Organized by the Chicago Federation of Labor, the coalition includes Service Employees International Union branches representing health care and janitorial workers, as well as the laborers, carpenters, and operating engineers unions. The purchase prevented a bid by the owner of a rival newspaper, the Chicago Tribune, which raised concerns that the two papers would be merged at the expense of jobs, journalistic integrity, and the diversity of voices in the country's third largest media market. Chicago Federation of Labor President Jorge Ramirez is now also chairman of the Sun-Times. This is a historic coalition of people from across the social spectrum and the societal spectrum who came together with one common goal. Together, we've embarked in a monumental effort to preserve independent media entities in Chicago and protect their journalistic integrity. Since its inception, the labor movement remains committed to raising people up by building strong communities. We believe that this begins by protecting the common good. The Chicago Federation of Labor represents more than 300 unions that in turn represent over half a million working men and women across Chicago and Cook County who rely on and value honest and ethical reporting. Craig Rosenbaum is executive director of the Chicago News Guild, which represents newsroom workers at the Sun-Times and the Reader. While they were not involved with the coalition that purchased the paper, they were pleased that they didn't end up in the hands of the owners of the Tribune. I think it's great now that we have actually owners that want to talk about issues that are important to working class people, that are important to minorities, because that's really what Chicago is made up of. I think it should get national attention because I don't know of this ever happening, ever. This is a challenging industry, and I think that if unions want the issues of working people covered, what better than to own a legacy news outlet like the Chicago Sun-Times? Utah's largest teachers' union has filed a lawsuit to block online access to a website that reveals disciplinary actions against teachers over the past decade. The Utah Education Association is concerned by the retroactive nature of the website. Cass Harstead is an attorney representing the union. Something like 75% of educator discipline is done through agreement, where the educator says, okay, I'm going to waive my due process right to a hearing, and I'll take this discipline. Educators were never told that the discipline would be published on a public and searchable website. UEA isn't opposed to transparency. They're not opposed to the website necessarily going forward, but you can't change the terms of these agreements for the last 10 years without educators' consent. 
Brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield National Labor Office, empowering working Americans with stable health coverage for over 50 years. The National Labor Office is committed to remaining the top choice for the 17 million union workers, retirees, and families they serve. Online at bcbs.com slash NLO. You've been listening to WIN, Workers Independent News. For more information, visit workersindependentnews.com. Hi, we're back, and everything is possible again. Isn't it beautiful? Well... If you want to keep it this way, buy a stinking podcast. Oh, yes, you have to buy a stinking podcast. And you get that at randyroads.com, where we're open all day, all night long. randyroads.com. Get your stinking podcast. Call in, connect. To speak to Randy, call 561-270-3844. This is the only honest that someone has information on our opponent. You know, things are going a million miles an hour. You know what it's like to be on a campaign. We just won Indiana, but we're talking about a contested convention. Things are going a million miles an hour again. And hey, wait a minute. I've heard about all these things, but maybe this is something. I should hear him out. Did do you tell your father anything about this? No. Uh, it was such a nothing. I, there was nothing to tell. I mean, I wouldn't have even remembered it until you start scouring through the stuff. It was, it was literally just a wasted 20 minutes, which was a shame. Now, that full interview airs just ahead at 10, and you can decide for yourself what you think. But before then, consider what we know now, what Donald Trump Jr. did. A publicist emailed him to say his client had damaging information about a political opponent. Trump met with the client. Apparently, he learned nothing during that meeting. For that, he's an enemy of the state guilty of a capital crime. Now, if that is true, we've reached a new level of hysteria that could be dangerous to an awful lot of people and not just the Trump family. How many lobbyists in Washington routinely meet with foreign agents who are seeking to influence American policy? Yes, but they're registered. Probably. It's going on right now as we speak in dozens of restaurants in D.C. You know, I love the way they mischaracterize. I mean, either they're stupid, dumb as a rock, and or, or they know they're lying. And, and it's up to you to decide. But Tucker Carlson should know should know because he's been around Washington long enough that if you are a lobbyist for a foreign government, you have to register under FARA. So yes, there are people representing foreign governments. I mean, Fat Danny Hastert used to be a lobbyist for Turkey, but he was registered, the child molester was, and now he's registered as a sex offender. (laughs) Always have to register, you just do, it's America, you know? But uh, he's just sitting there lying. Lying, saying that he's characterizing this meeting as a publicist asked Junior to meet with his client, which would be Emin, okay, Emin Araglarver, and that's not who he met with, okay. He met with Natalia Veselnitskaya, uh, this 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 uh, a Russian intelligence officer, Akmenchen, who both worked for Prevazon, a Russian uh, 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 government-owned money laundering uh, operation. Okay, that's who he met with. And he also met with, um, uh, whatchamacallit, Uh, a a, a representative of the Aragrarla family was also in that meeting. And uh, what's so special about Aris? Aris being in, uh, you know, sending a representative to be in there because Aris Agararlov is the guy who helped Trump bring the Miss Universe pageant to Moscow. He's also known as the Donald Trump of Moscow. And he was trying to partner with Donald Trump to build Trump Tower Moscow. And he sent a representative. Now, if Junior didn't know who these people were, why are there videos of them all having dinner and palling around and talking about bringing Miss Unit? And of course, Junior knew because he was in uh, Moscow dozens of times. So was uh, Ivanka. They traveled there all the time to look for business opportunities. And they know the Agararlovs. And so there was a representative from that family in that meeting, too. So this is quite a meeting. And by the way, we now know that during the meeting, 
Achmeshten and Veselnitskaya brought a plastic folder with printed out documents that detailed the dirt on Hillary. She had documents that claimed to show uh, a flow of illicit funds to the Democratic National Committee from Russia and Veselnitskaya uh, prompted Junior to tell his father to make this public. Make this public. It really will help your campaign. The Russian government is behind you. The Agarilovs are, are oligarchs, and you know, uh, the, and this intel guy who worked for Prev. We're all with you because we know in the Prevazon case, the money was used to buy seventeen million dollars worth of Trump properties. So we'll protect you, and you do this, and then we could do business together. And won't it be great? We'll have new places to launder money, and you could take these damn sanctions off of us. And won't that be great? Because then Vlad can start laundering his money. Oh, by the way, you know where Prevazon was located? Cyprus. That's where Paul Manafort's money tended to go. It's just so interesting. Anyway. She said, quote, this could be a good issue to expose how the DNC is accepting bad money. Actually, he said that. Akhmetchen said it. And Trump asked, uh, asked uh, Veselnitskaya if she had all the evidence to back up these claims on paper that she was presenting. Could she demonstrate the flow of money? And Veselnitskaya said the Trump campaign has to research it more. And after that, they all lost interest in the meeting because she didn't come with a complete dossier. She said, you're gonna have to do some work and the Trumps don't work, they golf and launder money. It's the Trump laundromat. So that is what Mueller is investigating. That is what Preepahara will be a witness to. This Prevazon case is huge and why the media doesn't report it, I don't know. But they're reporting wall to wall about this lobbyist with alleged Russian intel ties who attended the meeting. This man worked for Prevazon. So did she. And and they really need to look into the Agarilov's family. Do you know? I I don't know why they won't do it, but we're so ahead of it that, uh, you know, you should kiss my ass. Laura in Portland. Hello, Randy. It's Laura. (laughs) Yes. Okay. Um, you know, I've been thinking about my dad today because he, 1950s, he was a Russian linguist and actually a uh, U.S. spy a on cunning, Russia. A cunning linguist. Yes, yes. yes. And so, um, anyway, when um, back in the early 90s, when the you know Russian, the Soviet mm-hmm. Union kind of disintegrated, um, he's like, no, we're not done with them yet. Oh no. They're not going to go quietly. No, oh, it's true. And I thought he, I thought he was nuts. I'm like, come on, Dad, get with it. Mm. You're being, you know, a right winger. But he was right. And uh, yeah, he was right. So yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to, you know, let you know that because um, he knew, I guess, better than any of us. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. No problem. All right. Bye bye. Bye bye. John on Long Island. Hi, Randy. Hi, uh, John. First- how you doing? First Good. off, I'd like to uh, thank you. Uh, you set me on this path uh, 12, 13 years ago, um, and I put you right up there with George Collin as far as turning up people's minds. So <laughs> oh, wow. That's huge. That's gigantic. If, if you know how I feel about George Collin. You, you know how really I feel about George Collin. I, I, I've met George Collin's daughter. I've gone to see her one-woman show, but that's that's the closest connection I've ever had and I, with with him. I think he's a genius. I think he's, you know, it, it, it's funny. If you watch his routines now, if you watch his bits now, and they're not really routines and bits, they're like, you know, uh, they seem top of mind. They seem, you know, scatological. Uh, they were very well thought out. The, his mastery of language, the way he, but it's evergreen. You listen to what he was saying then. It happened. His job was to make people think, which is what you are so good at. You know who else was I great like say, that? Bill Hicks. He was a great comedian. I'm going to make a strong effort to oh, about him. Go watch some old Bill Hicks videos. Oh, my God. So here's the thing. Uh, a couple of, one question and a, a short comment. So the question is, I, I'm really nervous about all this investigation with Mueller because I heard somewhere that he was a lawyer that was working for some of the oligarchs and the gas and oil industry from Russia in the past, and then he gets the job to be to do the investigating. Um, and I'm a little concerned about that because 
it seems to me like there's an awful lot, you know, we're beyond smoke at this point. We're beyond a little bit of fire. And shouldn't it be at least low-level uh, arresting uh, conducted at this point? Shouldn't there be what? At least low-level arrest being conducted, just just to show, you know, the people, you know, because... Low-level... Low-level... Arrest. Arresting. Oh, yeah. arresting. That's not a word. Okay, low-level yeah. arrests. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, who would you arrest? Well, I don't know, but there has to well, be that's the problem. <laughs> any number of people associated uh, with this scandal before it ever gets to the Trump season. So that's what worries me, because it almost seems like, you know, Mueller's investigating, he's investigating, he's investigating, he's investigating. But, you know, it terrifies me. That but this is what this is what this was the value, the, the you know, the ultimate value of Malcolm Nance giving us some of his time today, which I really appreciate because he's so busy. You know, Stephanie is mounted on top of him almost permanently that we had to kick her off to get him, uh, you know, to talk to us today. But Malcolm said this and I and I, I take this to heart. He said you have to watch over the next 60 to 90 days. Because if people aren't cooperating, if Michael Flynn, if Paul Manafort, if Jared Kushner, if they're not cooperating at the end of 60 to 90 days, because that's what they will give them to comply, okay, then he said you will see uh, SWAT teams raid their offices and their homes and walk out with computers and documents and all that stuff. So right now, I imagine Manafort is sewing pearls into the hem of his garment so he can have money to flee. Uh, but, okay, people from the Holocaust, you get it, because, you know, this was a story Grandma told me. But, you know, if people, you know, if they're not burning their documents now, uh, you know, then we got a shot at it. But this is what we're watching for, to see who's flipping, who's cooperating. Now, they're all lawyered up. And so the first thing you had to look for was who got lawyered up. All of them did. Wow. Okay, so now the next thing you have to look at is who's flipped and who hasn't. And here's a great way to know. Whoever's not cooperating will be raided. Um, and if I might, the, the, just one brief comment. Uh, I have to stop with the, with the uh, mainstream the cable news, but it's hard. It's like a train wreck. Well, one of the things well I some days over over I again. look at it and I and I think it's the stupidest, stupidest thing I've yeah. ever seen in my life. And other days they actually right. produce breaking news. Well, what I keep wanting to say is I see them pivoting, pivoting, pivoting. Every time it gets caught with something that's unforgivable, they pivot to Hillary. They pivot to uh, Barack. And I have to make one comment, very simple, and I don't understand why they don't say it. Number one, even if you're right, and I don't think you're right, Two wrongs don't make a right. And number two, neither of them are president. End of story. No, it's not the end of the story. The story goes a little more like this. She was under investigation for God knows a million things. 11 hours of testimony she gave under oath in the Benghazi hearings that went on and on and on for years and years and years. Then they realized there was no there there. We got an admission from a Republican congressman. It was just men meant to drive down her popularity. It was meant to hurt her because they knew she was going to run for president. OK, so we, we got done with that. Then what did they do? They started this whole email thing. Where did this email thing come from? Where did it come from? Well, my concern is I was saying to Howard. And, that, that, and yeah. wait, okay, not done. She was investigated over these emails for almost a year and a half, two, almost two years. I mean, investigated, 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 investigated. Computers were taken. They, the Fox News, oh, they smashed phones. Turns out when you want to get rid of your phone and you don't want the data to be laying around, that's what you do. You take a hammer to your phone and you break it. And everybody who has a phone that doesn't want the contents of that phone known, you know, when you get your new phone, you transfer what you want and then you break your old phone. Everybody knows that. They were making it sound like something so clandestine. Meanwhile, you got the, 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 the Trumps meeting with the entire cast of Anna Karenina You've got the entire, you know, uh, uh, IMDb of uh, of Dr. Shivago sitting in Trump Jr.'s office. Honest to God, man, what is wrong with them? I'll tell you what's wrong with them. They're not Americans. They're not. They're loyalists. They're actual patsies. Yeah. yeah. And I have to say, what concerns me is this talk about how Eric, Eric, uh, not uh, Don Jr. just came, gave out these emails, and people are saying, well. You know, it doesn't matter because in the end, his father is just going to pardon him. And my concern is, as far as optically speaking, you know, you sit there and you go, you know, we're not going to pursue this. 
you know, legally, your politicians are not going to talk about it because it's just going to pardon them anyway. And the problem is, is that if spreading this narrative that Russia wants to spread, that your democracy is no better than our way of life. It doesn't mean anything. Nothing means anything. Well, that's and- true. I'm sorry, John. I don't mean to cut you off, but we're heading toward a break. That's exactly true. I mean, look, we all know Trump will pardon his son. There was just no question in my mind that that is coming. That will happen. But if it happens and when it happens, you know, the 34 percent that support Trump won't give a damn. You know that they won't because they're patsies. They're being conned. But what the hell does that mean about our country? For a commercial free, on demand, whenever, wherever listening experience, visit RandyRhodes.com for your personal premium podcast today. Hey, do you own gold? You know, if you don't, you're in a bad position. Stocks are at an all-time high. Gold at recent lows. So maybe to you it seems like things are going great, but I can assure you if another stock market crash comes, if another 2008 happens, are you protected? I don't think so. Don't wait until after something bad happens because then stocks fall and gold goes up. Get gold now while it's low and diversify your portfolio today. Because once you have gold in your portfolio, you can rest assured you are protected. So call my friends at ITM Trading at one own gold They're experts at diversifying investment portfolios with precious metals. They can help you in building a custom strategy based on your goals, your objectives. Please don't follow the herd and don't wait till it's too late. Take action today and bring safety to your financial future. Call ITM Trading today at one triple eight own gold and speak to a precious metals expert and ask for a free gold kit. one triple eight own gold one triple eight O W N G O L D. Try and get up every morning, day after day, and work for a living. Let's see him try that. Then we'll see who's the real tough guy. The working man is the tough guy. With me, Joe Wilson, a wealth management advisor with a big money management house. Mo money, mo money, yo money, Joe money. We're happy to get the kind of money that jingles, but we'd rather get the kind that folds. Not your grandpa's financial show. What's going on, my money mavens and moolah misfits? It's me, your money guy, Joe Wilson of the Joe Knows Money Show, reporting live on Progressive Voices Network, delivering you four minutes of money news you can use. Trending this week in money news, the annual cost to own and operate a vehicle is $8,698, according to AAA's Your Driving Cost Study. This research examines the cost of fuel, maintenance, tires, insurance, license and registration fees, taxes, depreciation, and finance charges associated with driving a typical sedan 15,000 miles annually. That leads me to my next topic six ways to save on car expenses number one do your homework repairpal.com gives free quotes for car repairs using a patented auto repair price estimator that aims to educate car owners about the fair cost of auto repairs number two research repair costs to learn what owners say about problems in repair costs for particular car models go to carcomplaints.com Number three, clean your battery. Although very cold temperatures can reduce battery power by up to 50%, summer's heat is hardest on the internal mechanism. To minimize problems, clean corrosion from terminals with a mixture of baking soda and water on a small brush and tighten cable connections. Get your battery tested if it is more than three years old. Number four, combine errands. When you're running errands, combine trips and drive to the furthest destination first so your car can warm up for maximum fuel efficiency. Starting with the closer stops reduces your gas mileage. Number 5. Maximize Gas Rewards Grocery chains like Safeway, Kroger, and Winn-Dixie offer gasoline reward programs. Get friends and family to share a club car number so points pile up faster. Number 6 inflate and save extreme temperature changes can lower tire air pressure adversely affecting gas mileage and causing tires to wear more quickly it's best to check your tires on a frequent basis to maintain the manufacturer's recommended pressure now it's time for joe's money trap of the day 
Don't over oil. Getting an oil change every 3,000 miles is old school. Many newer cars use synthetic oils that last 7,500 miles or more and include oil change indicators. Go to checkyournumber.org for the recommended oil change intervals for car models between 2000 and 2016. Not only will you save money by not changing your oil as often, but you will also contribute to a cleaner environment. Here is Joe's money grab of the day, BYOP, bring your own parts. Some car repair shops will install parts brought by customers, which could save you a lot of money. And now it's time for Joe's quote of the day. You may delay, but time will not. That is a quote by Benjamin Franklin. You are listening to the Joe Knows Money Show on Progressive Voices Network. Follow us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Joe Knows Money to hear this and other money news you can use segments. This is the Randy Rhodes Show. To speak with Randy, dial 561-270-3844. That's 561-270-3844. Well, but uh, we have never heard about any projects in uh, Russia, but it's a big market. Maybe it uh, should be interesting for such a business. It, it, it is. I, I've been there many times. Uh, and I spent quite a bit of time in Moscow looking at deals. And uh, what uh, would you do in Russia? What kind of project? It depends. I mean, the things that I've looked at thus far, um, I've looked at everything from resort to hotel. Uh, I was there last summer uh, looking at a potential golf development. Oops. Uh, because that's a big part of what we do also, high-end golf courses and championship-type golf courses. A uh, big part of what we do now is uh, the hotel world, so you know, building, managing, branding, uh, high-end hotel assets. So you know, I think any of those things would be possibilities. <laughs> Junior, you're such a douche. <laughs> you really are. Shut the fuck up, Donnie. <laughs> hey, look who it is. Scott Rippy. Hi, Scott. Randy, how are you, honey? Okay, so I have to tell you, we, we are trying to make our user experience a whole lot better for you this uh, coming year because uh, tomorrow, we should have celebrated it today, but tomorrow will be one year that we relaunched the show. Yay. <laughs> And so we're doing a one-year refresh, and that includes hiring a new marketing company, and Scott is uh, the owner of it. So, hi, Scott. And, and you know how I found him? He called into the show and offered his services. So thank you for taking on our cause. We are very excited to help. I know. Very excited. But I, I have a really super important question for you. Okay. I'm, I'm sort of like calling on behalf of the 3,000 people on YouTube, and um, I've been watching the chat room for the last couple of hours. And people are freaking out about not having boobies today. Oh, because Malcolm was right out of the box, and I just didn't want to waste his time with uh, the song. Oh, yeah. So okay, I made so... an executive decision to uh, bump it in favor of Malcolm Nance. All right, so you can quell all those conspiracy theories right now, right? Why? What do they think happened? I had a mastectomy, oh, they, God uh, forbid. What do they think? No, <laughs> uh, they think you've got a new producer who doesn't like the boobies anymore. Oh, and... no, I do have a new producer. I have two new producers. Thank God. I mean, thank you, everybody, for, for supporting this show. Uh, we have hired uh, Scotty, who grew up in my house. It's crazy. And his best friend, who also grew up in my house. <laughs> so we have Brett, Brett Rowley and Scott Mednick and Scott Rogo, who has been, uh, you know, giving us his time in the interim while we, you know, looked for, uh, you know, the people that grew up in my house. Um, he, he, he's going to be the first fill in for, um, you know, uh, for, for, uh, Brett Rowley. So we have staff now. I actually have four people working for this company, plus you as a new addition into the new year. So this could never have happened if people didn't uh, invest in us. And I just want you to know that I would rather invest in growing the show than pay myself. So that is what we've done. And this next year is going to be so much better. And you got a whole bunch of people named Scott who are ready to, ready to help you out. I know. It's like the Scotsman. <laughs> RandyTheScots.com. That's it. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Listen, uh, uh, I'll talk to you over the weekend. If not, I'll uh, speak to you next week, okay? All right. Have a great weekend. I'm loving you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Yay. 
He's got a nice marketing company out of Madison, Wisconsin. He called the show. He heard us complaining about, you know, people don't like the way the podcast is delivered. And I don't blame you. And you can't change your password easily. You can't do a lot of things. And I've just uh, like had it up to here. And I just said, you know, we need help. We need help. And I asked you to help, uh, you know, with uh, donations or to buy the stinking pot, whatever. And now, you know, we're in a position to, to, to do one of two things. I could either enrich myself and, uh, you know, keep it this, uh, you know, this bad user experience or, or I could make it better and hire the right people to help me put together the show, uh, to help me digest, you know, uh, uh, all these stories, to help me, uh, you know, do uh, stuff on the fly because with Trump, everything breaks during the show. And that's what Mednick does. He's so good at that. And, of course, uh, Brett, this is so funny. One of Jessica's favorite people in the world is Brett Rowley. Okay? She loves Brett Rowley. She's known, I mean, you know, they, they've known each other since they're like 15, right? And so now they're like 31, 32. You know, they're grow, everybody's grown. Everybody's got... Now, Scotty didn't listen to me. I told him, stay the hell out of radio. It's a brutal, horrible, crazy business with no barrier to entry and weird people just walk on in, you know? And uh, he went into radio. So he ended up producing um, Rick Sanchez and he ended up producing Fernand Armandi, who you know, that gorgeous, gorgeous guy that's always on with Joy, Reed. And uh, so then they blew out his show and Scott became available. I said, come talk to me, will you please just come? And of course, Scott said, you know, there's a guy I love to work with and his name's Brett Rowley. So I said, well, let me call Jessica. So I called Jessica, I go, I think I just hired somebody else that you know. And she said, who? And I said, Brett Rowley. Oh my God, he is my favorite person in the whole world. And then she said, this is so effed up. You're working with all my old friends. How the hell did that happen? And I said, I don't know. And then she said, you really ought to have taken me seriously because when you first started doing this and planning this launch and everything, I sent you Brett Rowley's uh, you know, resume and you wouldn't return his call. So maybe it's time for you to start taking me seriously because she's a television producer. You know, Jessica produces, um, well, she was producing Teen Mom, but she's just moved over to um, 16 and Pregnant, and they're going to modernize the look of the show, and that's, you know, she's a, a producer-director, and that's what she's there to do. So anyway, I mean, it's just an amazing thing. It's like, you know, uh, it's like family here now, and I thank you all for giving us uh, the ability to actually pay uh, you know, real salaries to real people uh, who really know what they're doing. So thank you so much. And then we went and hired, a, you know, this marketing firm who are going to look at our back end. They're going to look at the way we deliver the podcast to you. They're going to look at everything, even our store, all those things, and make things super, super, super streamlined and easy. And I'm very excited that we finally have the money to do it. Doesn't mean it's enough because I'm not paying myself yet. <laughs> Or Howard, right? Howard works gratis, too. <laughs> he does. Howard comes in, answers the phone every day. For two hours of his life, he is here every single day, no matter what is on his schedule. And he does this, and I pay him absolutely nothing. Although tonight I might, uh, you know, settle that score. I started last night, didn't I? Yeah. It was good. It was a good start. You know, you become estranged. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's try. Oh, Brother David. Brother David. Hello. Bounce your boobies. Let's give a second chance. Bounce your boobies. Make way for Malcolm Nance. Oh, sister. I apologize. I, I just, uh, I just. You thought... shouldn't apologize. It's all good. Yeah. Tomorrow is the anniversary. It's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful thing. Yes. Tomorrow would be one year we launched. Exactly, Miss Ma'am. And I was there. And okay, I have a few things to say to you. First, I have to get it out of the way because I am, after all, the acolyte of she who must be heard, registered trademark, which would be, would be you. Chat room, tell 10 people you know who don't listen to go to YouTube and like and subscribe and or go to Twitter and Follow and we retweet and buy a stinking podcast. Yes, the, okay, the, the, first, the first two things are free. So here's what I really... Yeah, exactly, my point entirely. Honestly, I really do want people who listen to the show and love the show and not understand the value of it and how hard we do work and that, I, you know... Yeah, exactly. Okay, I just want them to go and reach out to 10 friends and tell their friends to subscribe to our YouTube channel. All that will yeah. happen is it costs nothing, and, they, and your friends will get a and notice. And it's there. It's I'm, so there. Yeah. I get it every day in my feed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, Absolutely. and then it, and then it will notify you that we're going live, and you can watch it or not watch it. It doesn't matter. Exactly. 
Exactly. And and even if you don't buy a single podcast, it's there and you can follow. Well, and yes, then absolutely. the other thing is to please follow me at Randy Rhodes on Twitter. Well, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Miss Ma'am. Thank you, Miss Ma'am. And, and I'm not here's, even a big fan. And here's why. Okay, we have 45,000. We made it to 45,000. It's, it's crazy because what did I say? I said I wanted to go 45,000 by the end of the first year and we just right. we just did it. We just hit 45,000 followers. So yeah, we started with nothing and now we have 45,000 and that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a beginning. It's a beginning, but if you want to be what they call an influencer, right. okay, an uh-huh, influencer, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. you've been drinking. No, I just, I'm just, I'm just totally with you on. I will soon be drinking. Though, no, you are my, drinking. I, I, I bless know, your heart. I know um, you. You're, you're I drunk. Love you, sister. Yes, I've had a vodka already. Okay, oh, give me a break. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I love you so. But go on, go on. No, it's influencer, influencer. Yes. Yeah, to be an influencer, you have to have a million people. A million. That's it. And then once you have a million, you're made. You're a made man. Well, then I have to I have to up, upgrade the radical fairy things and the candles that I've been doing. Okay, here's two things for you, sister. <laughs> One, anytime Malcolm Nance wants to come on your show, please, yes, oh yes, absolutely. It's uh, he, 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 the two of you together. It's it's like nothing else on the radio. It's it's bingo. Don't Bingo. tell that. Don't say that out loud because then my girlfriend Stephanie, uh, you know, will mount him well, again, and I won't be able to, to pry in. her off. <laughs> I mean, she well, rides him like a like a bull. I mean, I've never seen anything like it. She, well, that's true. She, she hoards see, but, him, and she's supposed she, to be the lesbian of the two of us. I don't understand <laughs> why is she on top of him like that. Get off of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't really answer to that, yeah. but uh, he, 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 it was a wonderful, the, the uh, earlier great. in Listen, the show, it was amazing. Go finish amazing. your vodka. You're, you're half in the bag. Go, go. I love you. It's fine. I love you back. Okay. We're good. Here's one thing I wanted to oh, tell you. Oh, God. All right. No, no. I have something you, <laughs> you need to know. You need to, do you ever go to Vulture? No. Go to Vulture and put in Annika, A-N-I-K-A. Chapin, C-H-A-P-I-N, and Assassins. And she gives the most amazing way down of a rundown of why we're at in conjunction with what's closing at Encores on Sunday night. But how's her handbags? Um, (laughs) Well, then there's that. Um, (laughs) But seriously. Wow, um, I got to let you go. Because you're going to listen to this later, and you're going to say... Oh, sister, why did you let me sound like that? So, but I love you, David, and it's fine. It's Friday. It's after five. Go ahead. Go have your vodka. Karen in Whittier, California, you probably (laughs) will finish this show. (laughs) Was he half in the bag or am I making crap up? It's five o'clock somewhere. Somewhere. (laughs) Sorry. I'm listening to that. Just totally amused. Anyway, first of all, we did miss the Grand Tetons. Oh, I'm we so need- sorry. I I just okay. I I chose. I thought Malcolm no. was more important. Than- Malcolm was more important, but we do miss the gra- the dance of the grand Tetons. All right. Well, so- you know we haven't popped <laughs> Brett's cherry yet, so next Friday will be his uh, his big cherry pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk about Dina Rohrbacher, oh. the foil on the butt of California. Why do you oh. send people like that? I don't. Don't leave me. I mean, I you sent us Daryl Isa. You have sent Darryl us Apple. Roar back. Why do you send us people like that? I sent you Linda Sanchez. Oh, I'm okay. A good girl. All right. <laughs> All right. I'm a good girl. So no, I and, and then Ed Royce is like in the next district over to me. Feel sorry for me. I have to live here. I know. Well, it's a good state. I mean, if you had to be anywhere right now in the country, oh, yeah. you're in a good Trust place. You're in a really. I'm in a very good place. Yeah, you're in a safe we have place. Very brown. We have Jerry Brown. Yeah. Trust me, we're weeding them out as we go. It used to be worse. Yeah. No. We had Dana Meyer. <laughs> no, Dana Rob. If you if you really you know um, in the homework section at randyroads.com is the Chuck Grassley letter. Open mm-hmm. it up. Go past his little one and a half page letter. Okay. Read what's attached to that letter. That letter that I just saw. You know, I just found it today. Right. It, it, it tells you 
everything you need to know about who these players were, who, well, what Dana Rohrbacher's role in introducing these assholes to our members of Congress, to he, he, uh, to yeah. introducing uh, you know uh, uh, amendments and legislations right. and tabling things to end the Magnitsky sanction. Dana Rohrbacher is practically a communist. Well, I, 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 and I emailed you an article from the OC Weekly. Yeah. Scott Moxley from the OC Weekly has been dodging Dana Rohrbacher for well over a decade. And let me tell you, I mean, it, it, and it's not just Dana. It's Ed, Roy, it's Ed Royce. It's Daryl Apple and a couple of others around here. Because, we, like I said, we've been slowly weeding them out for the last decade. And Dana, see, Dana is in a really cushy section on the coast. Yeah, I know, okay. I know. Even after, but even listen, after we did resistance. I don't care how cushy you are, you don't elect communists or communist sympathizers or what? oligarch sympathizers or kleptocrats. And that is what you have in a Dana Rohrbacher. You know, you want your health care? He ain't your guy. Have a great weekend. Buy a stinking podcast. Go to randyroads.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.